main method I use for pressing veneer is the vacuum bag. In fact, in most shops these days, that's what everybody uses. They're fairly simple and they can actually be picked up for not a lot of money. An outfit like this is about two to three hundred dollars. As I said, it's fairly simple. There's a bag and a pump to pump the air out of the bag. And once it, all the air is out, it pushes the veneer down and the pressure on atmospheric pressure is 14.7 pounds per square inch. That means on every square inch there's 14.7 pounds. The other thing about it is very even. With a clamp, you can clamp a little more here, a little more there, and it might be uneven. This is going to be completely even pressure all the way down. If I'm doing a curve, it's the same thing. It'll be pressure on all sides. So it's really very versatile. I like it because it's versatile that way, and also I can roll it up, put it up in my veneer shelf, and store it safely. The other part are these platens. With this, these are flat boards of melamine, and I've taken it on the table saw and cut a grid work of lines about six inches on center that I can put in the bag. Um, and what they do is I have the hose going out of the pump into the bag and there's a hole drilled in the side of the platen. The air can go th through here and up the hose. And this grid can carry the air through the whole bag. I have different size platens you see. I have a bigger one, a smaller one. I have other smaller ones and bigger ones. I can combine them in here depending on what size of pieces I want to do. Right now I'm doing a fairly small piece, but I did want to show you how I can put these in to do larger pieces. You can also see there's, there's a patch. You can actually patch these if they tear. Um, a good way to check them for tears and holes is to turn the pump on, as you'll see when I turn it on how it works. Spray some Windex or soap on the bag and anywhere where there's a hole, it'll, soap will bubble up. You might notice these pieces, and any piece I put in there needs to have the edge rounded a little bit. That way it won't poke a hole in the bag. Now I just take a sanding stick and sand the edges over. This is actually going to be the piece that goes over the top of my veneered panel when I put it in. So next I'd like to get the panel glued up and ready to put in. Now I have my panel ready to go into the bag. I've spread the glue on my substrate, put down my veneer, I taped it a little bit at the ends so it wouldn't slide around. I'm putting some newsprint over the top and put another thin piece of wood, scrap wood on the top. It does need to have a smooth surface because any defects in this will get pressed into the veneer. This is actually some pre-finished maple plywood that I had. It's be very good. The finish will keep it from glue from sticking. And make sure there's paper there so the finish doesn't dig into the veneer. I'm going to load the bag from the end. easy if you put your veneered piece onto another board, you can just slide that in. There's good. Next thing I want to do is make sure this scrap piece is centered over the top of the veneer. You can see around the edge lined up just right. To seal the bag, there's usually some kind of a sealing mechanism. Some have a zipper, like a Ziploc bag. This one has a two-piece plastic piece that I fit in underneath and locks together from the top. You need to make real sure that this is flat. Anywhere there's like a bubble like that, air is going to get through here. Just seal it up the best you possibly can. So I'm going to just make sure it's laying down flat. You can see here there's a possibility there might be one there, so I'm going to pull it out, make sure it's flat. And then lock it down with a good tight seal. And this particular pump is a continuous duty pump, so I'm just going to turn it on and it's just going to run constantly keeping the vacuum pressure up. I'll leave this in here for two to three hours to make sure it's pressed. There's other types that they'll turn on and off as, as they have a demand for air. So I'm just going to turn off or turn on let it run. This is a small pump so it'll take quite a while to get the air out. 
maybe two or three minutes. So I want to make sure when the air is coming out that I keep it even. I don't want any wrinkles over the top of the bag. And I can continue to move this around if it slides. Like I mentioned before, the pressure here is about 14.7 pounds per square inch. Um, that depends, that's at sea level. I did have a shop in New Mexico and it was at 7,500 feet and the pressure is considerably less. So for bending, things like that, you might want to double check it again. But this thing does give a lot of pressure. It's pretty amazing. Uh, you can see the air is starting to come out now. I want to make sure there's some slack here. The best way to check pressure, just be sure is these little bubbles should be really tight. You shouldn't be able to pull them off. It should be like solid plastic here. That's a really good indication that it's got a lot of pressure. Like I said, I'll leave it in here about two hours minimum, and we'll see how it comes out.